welcome to my first YouTube video series. In the last time I experimented a lot with electronics and the programming of microcontrollers, especially in the world of Arduino boards. Having made some interesting experiences, I have the desire now to share some of them. In my hands you see my preferred board, it's an Arduino Nano board. In this video series I want to present my last build. It's a versatile shield that can be used in combination with an Arduino Nano board. The shield can be either used for simplified prototyping or simplified implementation of actual devices. The great thing with the Arduino Nano board is its tiny size. On the one hand it's perfect for prototyping in combination with the breadboard. And on the other hand, due to its tiny form factor, it's perfect to implement an actual device. The shield and the corresponding base code ease the implementation of elements you often need in an assembly. These are, for example, LEDs, buttons, a piezo sound buzzer and other things. Here you see my prototyping assembly of the shield. All available elements are implemented in this assembly. The I2C part of the shield is connected to an LCD display. On the shield's custom area, a couple of buttons and a potentiometer are implemented. In addition to this, this implementation of the shield is hooked up to a breadboard. And here you see the implementation of a device. As you can see in the LED area, not all LEDs are implemented. The shield is cut into half because the custom area is not needed. The advantages are obvious. You have a very tidy wiring. For frequently used elements like LEDs, you can get back on standard hardware circuitry and standard code snippets. Finally, you can focus all your energy on the main functionality of the device. Let's have a look on all the functionality of the Shields printed circuit board. PWM pin D3 of the Arduino board is connected to the mounting location of a piezo buzzer. The Arduino pins D9 to D12 are connected to LED mounting locations. For each LED you have the option to implement a specific resistor which supports the corresponding forward voltage of the chosen color. The PWM pins D9 to D11 give you the option to use the LEDs in pool width modulation mode. The Arduino pins D5 to D8 are connected to button pins. You can solder the wires of any button of your device to these pins. For each button there is the location to mount a pull-down resistor. Next you have 5 pairs of 5 volt and ground pins which you can use to supply any element in your device with 5 volt power. The analog pins A4 and A5 are routed to a location where you can mount an I2C part. The analog pins A0 and A1 are used to implement voltage dividers which can be used for voltage measurement. For each voltage divider you have the option to implement two resistors which divide the voltage. The next thing are two pins which can be used to connect an external power source. Optionally you can implement a power on off switch. Of course you can also shortcut this connection if you do not want to use a power on off switch. If you do not want to use the VN pin voltage conversion of the Arduino board or if you want to use higher voltages as power source, there is the option to implement an L7805 voltage conversion circuit. This circuit consists of a capacitor on the inside, two capacitors on the outside and of course the L7805 voltage conversion unit. For all custom elements of your device which are not covered by the standard elements of the shield, there is a custom implementation area. And the last thing available on the shield is a link up to a prototyping breadboard. As soon as the shield is supported with the 5 volt voltage, the breadboard is supplied with the corresponding voltage too. Okay, that's it about the supported functionality of the shield so far. However, one important topic to me is the support of the 5 volt voltage. In my different projects I came across different 5 volt voltage supply versions, which I all wanted to be able to be supported by the shield. So let's have a look what are the options of 5 volt supply. First, as per design of the Arduino Nanobot, you have the option to supply the 5 volt voltage by a USB connection. Besides this, you have the VN pin of the Arduino Nanobot, which converts a higher voltage to 5 volt, and you have the 5 volt pin where you can apply a 5 volt voltage directly. So, how can this efficiently be used by the shield? If you need a high current, it makes sense to use a power supply unit, which is connected to the grid and has 5V output. In this case, you connect the power switch directly to the 5V pin. 
A third option in case of using AA or AAA batteries is to use a step-up conversion unit. You could place the step-up conversion unit in the custom implementation area. From there you connect the 5 volt output of the step-up conversion unit with the 5 volt pin. For the Wii-in pin the Arduino Nanobot has a recommended input voltage from 7 to 12 volts. If your power supply unit is in between this range you could connect the power on off switch directly to the Wii-in pin. In case you have a need for an even higher voltage than the supported 12 volts of the Wii-in pin then you can use the L7805 conversion unit circuit of the shield. With these 5 options of 5 volt voltage supply, the shield can handle each requirement I met so far in my project. Finally, I want to give you some hands-on experience on my prototyping assembly of my shield. On the prototyping assembly, all possible elements are implemented. 4 LEDs, 4 buttons and a potentiometer in addition. An external power connector, a power on off switch and an L7805 voltage conversion circuit with a heat sink. On the back side you see the wiring of the buttons and the potentiometer. With the mail pins in the breadboard link up area, the breadboard can be connected to the shield. Let's attach a power supply to the shield now. In my example I'm using a 3S LiPo battery. As soon as the nanobot is powered up, it starts running the base code. The piezo buzzer plays a short beep sequence, all LEDs are flashing shortly and the LCD display outputs status information on the buttons, the potentiometer and the voltage dividers voltage measurements. The LEDs can be controlled now by the buttons. The base code supports three different button events. Button press event, button hold event and button release event. When a button is pushed a small beep occurs. When the button is hold the LED starts to blink. When the button is released a small beep occurs. The LED blink speed on button hold event is controlled by the potentiometer. On the LCD screen you see the voltage level of the 3S LiPo battery. The other voltage divider does not measure a voltage so it's zero. Directly next to voltage divider 2 voltage in pin there is a voltage line pin of the power supply located. By connecting the voltage supply pin with the voltage divider pin you can measure the input voltage of the supply. This way you can easily measure the voltage of the power supply by given features of the shield and the base code. Okay, that's it about part 1 of my video series about the versatile shield for prototyping and implementation. In part 2 of my video series I want to walk you through the hardware design considerations. In particular I want to talk about the circuits on the shield and the dimensioning of assembly parts when you want to implement the shield as a base for prototyping or as a base for the device. Finally, in part 3 of this video series I want to walk you through the base code of the shield and how you can adapt it to your specific needs in a project. As soon as I have reworked the hardware design files on the base code of the shield, I will post links in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope to meet you again in one of my other videos.